guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And tonight, well, this afternoon, really, the sun's still up. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, picked up this at the flea market the other day. I've had this on a bucket list item since uh, Fukushima. So uh, this is something a little bit different. This, I guess, you could consider to be uh, definitely in the lines more of prepping or survivalists than homesteading, which is pretty much what I'm up to. But I am a Boy Scout at heart, so this goes into the long lines of be prepared. So let's take a look at this. This is a CDV 777-2 radiation detection kit. In other words, it's a Geiger counter. Now this is civil defense uh, issued equipment that was kept uh, in bomb shelters and civil defense shelters up through the 90s. I think somewhere around 2008 or so was when they finally gave up on that idea, which is kind of scary if you think about it. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. Now, this is an unused box, um, and, and everything's in it, so it's pretty impressive here. I'll go ahead and take these out here, and then we'll set the box out of the way. There's a bunch of stuff in here, so let me just lay all this out. I'll go ahead and put the box on the ground here. So here's what we got. Okay, so this is the 715. This is the main unit here, and it reads in several different modes. I'll show a close-up of it here, but we have uh, 0.1 to 1 rad, uh, probably 1 to 10 rads, 10 to 100 rads, and then 100 to uh, 500 rads. Now keep in mind, if you're uh, in an area and this thing is in the 100 to 500 rad, you probably have less than an hour or two to live, so it's not really going to help you out in that situation. But in uh, the scale of uh, 10 to 100, you still have a possibility of getting out of the area in time before you start losing hair and teeth. Uh, part of my Army training involved taking nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare training. I have a book here. I can't. I, I was looking for it today because I was going to bring it out here to do some comparison and some notes and stuff. But you can pick it up. It's the NBC training manual. I'm sure it's been updated since I was in the military. But uh, it covers basically each one of these conditions. You know, how long can you survive an event? How long can you operate functional with, before you get ill in a variety of different rad conditions? Uh, memory serves, you know, 50 rads an hour, you have about two and a half hours before you start having irreparable damage. But anything over, say, 10 rads an hour and you're in some trouble, uh, you should seek shelter or get out of the area. So, Now these things are old. This one was last calibrated in 1992, I think it was. You can send them off and get them calibrated, so that's kind of cool. Um, and they probably work okay as they are, but it's probably a good idea to get it done. But there's also some other stuff here, so let me go through it. Now, this did come with the kit, this nice manual, which is actually like a real heavy, I feel like it's waterproofed, and this is from 1976, which is probably when this kit was originally built. It has the instructions for not only using the Geiger counter, but also these dose meters, and these are actually probably more useful uh, in the event of a nuclear scenario like a meltdown or a, a contamination, a dirty bomb, something like that. And I'll get into how these work here in a second. But it goes through all that, talks about, uh, oh look at this, here we go, total exposure. So 0 to 50 rads, no visible effects. This is cumulative. 50 to 200, brief periods of nausea on the day of exposure. 50% may experience radiation sickness. 5% may require medical attention. 2 to 500 rads, most members in this group will require medical attention because of serious radiation sickness. 50% will be dead within two to four weeks. So like I said, if you're hitting 500 rads and you're even taking that measurement, you're in deep doo-doo. 400 to 600, serious radiation sickness of all members. Deaths more than 50% within one week to three weeks. Over 600 rads, severe radiation sickness, 100% death in two weeks. Wow, pretty serious business, right? So uh, where would you be in a place where there would be five or 600 rads? If you're within 10 miles of a nuclear reactor and it went uh, Fukushima on you, if it went full meltdown and blew its lid, and you were directly downwind, it's entirely possible that you would hit those kind of numbers. Maybe not in one burst, but you would uh, have the accumulated 500 rads and that would definitely be bad for your health. So there are purposes for these things. And you know, we always think this stuff isn't going to happen, but it happens. <laughs> I'm only 45 years old, and it has happened twice in my lifetime. We've had Chernobyl, we've had Fukushima, and we've also had a couple close calls. We had Three Mile Island, which was a leak, and I'm sure there's probably been a dozen or so that haven't been reported or have been underreported. So let's not kid ourselves. Things like this actually do happen. 
We've also got some other paperwork here. Um, this is calibration inventory records. That's kind of cool. And then we have the instruction and maintenance manual. So this thing really came with everything you would need. Again, wiring diagrams if I were going to attempt repairs. It has a uh, cord you can put on there. So let me set that aside. We'll put this back a little bit. And we'll talk about these dose meters, which like I said, oh, it also came with a strap. You can put a strap on there. This is the other half of the uh, unit. This also runs on a single D-cell battery, and it also comes with its own instructions on top of the instructions that came with the main unit. So that's nice. Again, it's made of a thick cardboard uh, or thick paper. It feels like it has uh, water resistance to it. You know, talks about how to zero this and all the rest. So put that aside. But what is this? This is going to be for your dose meters. These are actually not one-time use. Um, a lot of times, people who work at nuclear power plants or whatnot, they'll carry around a card that looks like an ID badge, but it'll have a color to uh, tag on it. If that tag were to change colors, then you know you've been exposed to radiation. Those are one-time use. These things were a little more ingenious. Um, here's a still picture of what it looks like on the inside, but there is actually a meter. You see that? And that shows you the accumulated dose. So let's say that we were downwind 75 miles from a meltdown at a reactor, which is actually about the range of the nearest reactor from, from this location. So I, I know it's in the air, whether the government's telling me it's safe or not for me to be in the area. It's probably not a bad idea to monitor the actual dose you're taking in. Because again, a cumulative dose still equals big trouble. So you use this thing. You, again, you have one D-cell battery in here. And you unscrew this cap right here. And this is a two-fold. Uh, it allows you to uh, push down on this right here. And I won't do this all the way. But push down on here. There's a glass side up on top, which shows that picture that you just saw. And it lights up when you push down on it so you can see the dose that you've accumulated over the day. Then you use this meter right here, and again here's a close-up of this, and that meter allows you to re-zero the scale. So you can go back out with this very same piece tomorrow and do more work, and again check your total doses. So pretty neat uh, device, and very old school, very simplistic, and that's probably why they still work after all these years. First they've been maintained, and second, they're just not that sophisticated. So that's what I picked up. Now I didn't pay a whole lot for this. I actually paid about $30, which I think was a pretty good deal for it. Again, it's been on my list of things to purchase ever since Fukushima. Um, is this something that everyone needs? Probably not. Is this something that you might want to consider buying? Probably. You know, I wouldn't carry it around with me every day, but uh, in the event of a disaster, it's entirely possible that you may be exposed to high doses of radiation or even low doses of radiation, and it's something you need to be aware of. So a kit like this is not uh, absurd, it's not crazy, it's just being prepared. So that's it. Uh, I know this is a little bit different video. It's actually the first of about three or four videos that I'm going to do. They're going to be talking about subjects more related to survivalism or prepping than they are to homesteading, although a lot of it doubles over. You know, homesteading overlaps a lot of those things. Um, I just like the term homesteading because it doesn't have some of the negative connotations that most people out there that aren't familiar with the prepping or survivalist community would uh, would consider to be bad things. So, Anyway, I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the CDV 715 or the kit itself, the CDV 777-2, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I'm certainly no expert on it. I did go through nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare training when I was in the Army. That was about a lifetime ago at this point, but I still have the books, and I still keep polished on information like that because things we need to know in life, right? That's it. I'll see you next time. Take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Farpoint Farms.